of thanking you for uh, agreeing to give this exclusive interview. It's like one of your last interviews, and uh, I thank you for that. Uh, let me start by asking you, the, the Prime Minister recently said that you are Armenia's friend and you have done a lot of Armenia's uh, for Armenia's democracy. How do you feel after all these years? Your main highlights, please, Mr. Ambassador. First of all, thank you very much for hosting me. It is indeed my final interview, my final public speech in Armenia. And I, uh, I deliberately wanted us to have this conversation, you and me. Uh, throughout these years, I considered your radio, as Azatutun, as uh, the bulwark of free speech and a role model for journalists with your objectivity, your impartiality, your political neutrality, and your uh, attachment to the basic uh, values that uh, the European Union and Armenians should adhere. So thank you very much for this opportunity. I'm living Armenia fulfilled. Uh, I am satisfied with the way things developed between the European Union and Armenia. On my watch, we created a new legal basis we took our contractual uh, uh, arrangement to a new level. We concluded SEPA. Uh, on my watch, the European Union increased the level of development assistance by more than two times, which is quite unprecedented uh, in the neighborhood area. We have advanced our political agenda to a new level and uh, we have created an atmosphere where, indeed, uh, we can say never before uh, the character of re our relations uh, was at this uh, developed and uh, productive level. So I'm, I'm very happy. I'm really, really happy. And I wanted to thank, in particular, ordinary Armenians that uh, made my mission so uh, fulfilling, so rewarding. For me, the priority from the very outset was to connect the European Union with ordinary Armenians. What happened before 2013, 2014, persuaded me to pay particular attention to make Armenians know the European Union better, to understand our policies, and to appreciate what uh, we have been doing together with Armenia over the past years. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, thank you for very kind words. And also, I, I, I can say in, in return that, you know, there is no uh, ambassador in Armenia from, be it like uh, any Western country or EU ambassador that is so much known to ordinary Armenians, as you were <laughs> saying. They know you because they saw you, you went there, you met them, and this is uh, really uh, very, very uh, good diplomacy. And now we are, I'm going to ask very uh, concrete questions. We're witnessing the second year of this government, um, and I will announce the fight against corruption and the shadow economy and as a top priority. How do you assess these efforts? Are they succeeding in bringing uh, back legal economy into the light? Uh, I believe that uh, the efforts to fight against corruption and to uh, remove the, the grain zones from the economic activities have been uh, successful. I think that uh, the most important element in uh, combating corruption is the political will. And now Armenia has the political will. The leadership of the country, the government, has demonstrated very clearly, uh, inequivocally, that uh, they have the political will to combat corruption. But uh, as I have spoken before, 
there are other important elements like uh, institutions, legislation and political climate, which are the uh, irreplaceable components of a successful fight against corruption. So I'm very glad that Armenia is now moving to create new institutions. Uh, some legislation already has been developed. Uh, there is a very intense work on, on other pieces of, of legislation, uh, which would create a system of uh, combating corruption at different levels uh, that I'm very glad that uh, uh, these institutions uh, will be based on uh, very clear legislation and again some steps have been taken I hope very much that more steps will be taken in, in the future and then the, the public climate the public intolerance towards corruption I think that uh, Armenians do not want to go back to the previous times where uh, corruption, nepotism uh, were part of their life. They now understand that life without corruption is much better. Sometimes it's more difficult because uh, in, in countries where corruption uh, permeated all aspects of economy, administration and, and services, you know, it served as a lubricant. Things were done because there was always this element of corruption. But I believe now that most Armenians, if not all Armenians, understand that life is better without corruption. But uh, uh, as uh, uh, in uh, other countries, you need sustainability, you need dedication, you need commitment of a long uh, period of time. Uh, because, you know, fighting Corruption is like playing a chess game. You have always the opponent who is making moves. You cannot be complacent. You can't say, okay, now we are clean, we are confident. No. Corruption, even in the most developed, in the most democratic societies, is find, finding the inroads to go back, to come back. So it's a, playing a chess game. You must be always vigilant and continue, and continue. And you will see the results. You will always be able to see the positive results. So I wish that uh, the progress that has been made since the revolution last year uh, will be sustained. And most importantly, that people will be exerting constant pressure on the leaders, on the institutions, government, other public institutions, to stay clean. Mm -hmm. Mr. Ambassador, uh, now, in particular now, there's uh, some legislation that are related closely to fighting corruption uh, in judicial system uh, uh, among, among the judges. And now, uh, one of the uh, higher judicial council will be tasked in doing that, in uh, uh, vetting. Uh, it's not called vetting, but it's in... Uh, checking um, the backgrounds of the judges, whether they, they were involved in some form of fashion uh, with some corruption schemes. And also they are creating new, I mean, it's already there, uh, anti-corruption council in the, in the parliament, parliamentary co some commission, some commission that is already there, but it's not functioning. Do you think this, these are uh, important uh, uh, institutions that, are, that can really uh, fight uh, corruption, especially in the judi judicial system, and restore the confidence uh, you know, towards uh, courts in Armenia. I believe that uh, what uh, now uh, has been taking place in Armenia concerning uh, the effort to reform judiciary is very important for the future of the country. We as the European Union on several occasions, including at the highest level during the visit of President Tusk last July, we declared our readiness to support and to help. Uh, uh, after my departure, uh, there will be some uh, scheduled events which uh, will give us the opportunity to learn more about the plans of the Armenian partners. There will be, uh, in a few weeks, 
another session of our policy dialogue on justice with the Armenian government. Uh, what I can say also based of my, on my last contacts uh, with the new Minister of Justice, uh, with his team and other people, that uh, they have been doing a very intense job, uh, spending a lot of time and working really, really hard to develop a vision of reforms, uh, to develop strategies which are the necessary framework for individual initiatives like the anti-corruption courts and others. Uh, what we stress always as the European Union, we never try to impose anything on our partners, including Armenia. And I personally, I believe that there are enough competent people with really deep knowledge and um, you know, all the technical qualities and the political wisdom to develop the best solutions for Armenia. What we are ready as the European Union mm -hmm. uh, is to share the experience of other countries, uh, even provide experts who could explain how it worked or didn't work in other countries. We are ready to, in addition to technical assistance, provide financial assistance and, and uh, quite sizable, quite tangible financial assistance to help the Armenian government uh, implement the, the reform plans. And I believe that uh, uh, the justice reform will be crucial for the future of your country because it's so important for the economy, including foreign investment, because it's so important uh, for democratic processes uh, like uh, free elections. Uh, it's so important uh, for protecting the rights of ordinary citizens. Uh, therefore, you know, I'm living with a, a, a you know, feeling of optimism because what I have seen in the recent weeks uh, in terms of the effort of your new Minister of Justice and his team is really very impressive. I can tell you, I'm disclosing some brackets, but I'm leaving anyway, so I can allow myself of that. that uh, <laughs> when I first met your Minister of Justice and he presented to us a very ambitious plans developing these visions, these measures, I said, no, it's impossible. It's impossible. But he's delivering. Uh, I understand that uh, they prepared some documents already. They shared with, with the Council of Europe and other partners. Uh, so he's sticking to his plan. Uh, therefore, I'm optimistic. Yeah. Of course, sometimes it will be difficult. You know, in most countries, reform of judiciary is difficult because you have to combine different interests and at the same time to protect the basic value which is the independence of judiciary. So changing judiciary while preserving the independence of judiciary is a big challenge, also politically. Uh, but I'm, I'm really optimistic. Armenia can do it and should do it because it is so important for the good future of your country. Yeah. Mr. Ambassador, now uh, after Velvet's Revolution, we have high profile court cases. And in particular, Robert Kocharian's case, the country's uh, second president. Now the Constitutional Court uh, applied to the Venice Commission and the European Court of Human Rights for advisory opinion on this matter. Uh, do you think the Commission has a full understanding uh, of this case? And what will uh, we hear, what we can hear from from these institutions? Well, as you know, as a general policy, uh, we, the EU representatives, we never comment on individual cases. Uh, so I have to refrain because you refer to some individual cases. Uh, we work very closely with uh, our uh, partners in the Council of Europe. Uh, they are an organization in their own right, uh, meaning that uh, I cannot speculate what will be the outcome of the deliberations inside the Venice Commission. Uh, I hope very much that uh, what they present will be a very objective and professional vision, uh, assessment, 
uh, and um, you know it's part of the process. Uh, the opinion of international bodies is always important, uh, but uh, we should understand that the final decisions will be made in your country because you are a sovereign country. Uh, the Venice Commission provides with advisory views. They do not impose anything, although I would say it is always politically wise to listen to them and to implement uh, because that judgment is important. It's based on the uh, profound knowledge of the European jurisprudence. It is based on the experiences of other countries. So their opinion is always valuable. Uh, but the final decision is always with you, with the Armenians. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, this is something what I have been saying for, for many years. Uh, you should know how to handle your responsibility, which is the gist of sovereignty. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, now let, let's uh, turn into domestic policy. Uh, as you're following um, uh, the local politics, uh, how do you assess the quality of interactions between uh, the opposition and the ruling party and, and uh, the civil society on one hand and the government on the other hand? Do you, uh, what is the quality of these interactions? Do you see any difference now? Uh, compared to the previous uh, periods? Well, I believe that uh, the main difference that I can see when meeting Armenians and talking to Armenians, that uh, I detect this feeling of freedom in their eyes. The fear, which sometimes in the past was visibly present in their speeches, in their statements, in their conversations, today is gone. Uh, they behave like free people and they enjoy this freedom, which also sometimes has a dark side. The rise of the hate speech, which is a concern also for us, for the European Union, is a collateral damage to this uh, uh, new feeling of freedom. Uh, we encourage Armenia, including the, the government, uh, to deploy additional efforts to combat hate speech until it is not too late. The experience of some of EU members is that when you wait too long, then it's much more difficult to handle this. Armenia is still at an early stage of hate speech uh, rise, and I believe you can develop preventive measures to keep this uh, challenge in control. Concerning the political system, uh, I have said that the elections held in Armenia last December were remarkable. They, for me, are the starting point to build a mature democratic system. Uh, but always elections are the first step. You need to think about other elements of, you know, well-developed democratic system, including the political system, political parties. Uh, there will be a lot of changes. Already many changes has happened, have happened. Uh, I anticipate that uh, running up to the next elections there will be some new developments. That's part of the inevitable process. Uh, Armenia needs uh, uh, a mature political system. Uh, Armenia needs strong opposition because it's uh, part and parcel of healthy democracy. And uh, I believe that you know, uh, these uh, discussions uh, that are taking place in Armenia, um, <clears throat> sometimes they are frustrating, frustrating for the government, sometimes they are frustrating for, for the opposition, uh, but uh, uh, they will, uh, th they are, say, inescapable part of the development of a mature uh, democratic system in Armenia, which has many faces, including the question of the financing 
of the political parties and political activities. I always, in my conversations, uh, draw the, attentions of the, the attention of my partners uh, to the recommendations uh, after the last elections, where the question of financing uh, political campaigns, electoral campaigns and political parties is marked as an important uh, item which Armenia should consider in the coming years. So, you know, we never interfere in such domestic discussions, even if sometimes my name is uh, brought up in some of the statements, uh, we, we never interfere because we don't want to be part of it. Uh, but uh, we will be working with your parliament. The European Union has launched a, a big uh, program to support uh, your National Assembly to improve the quality of parliamentary debates and parliamentary work. We will be soon starting a twinning program a big twinning pr program, uh, which I hope will be benefiting the Armenian parliamentary uh, debates. Concerning the role of the civil society, uh, <clears throat> before the revolution, your civil society was something that Armenian citizens could be proud of because they provided for the pockets of uh, free and constructive uh, <clears throat> discussion and work advocating for freedoms and for respect of rights. Uh, today the situation is different. Uh, they should uh, preserve the credibility and uh, criticizing the government is part of the credibility even if emotionally they feel some proximity even if some of their colleagues have joined the current government. Uh, but uh, from my contacts recently, I can see that they take their role very seriously. They want to be the voice of the citizens, and the voice of the citizens sometimes has to be critical, sometimes has to operate with uh, you know, this feedback, which for any democratic government should be you know, uh, like, you know, daily uh, take of fresh air. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Ambassador, uh, now we know that some of the civic organizations, uh, one of these uh, famous ones, uh, the Union of Informed Citizens, is going to monitor uh, elections, lo local elections in, uh, in Nagorno-Karabakh. So uh, I know that the European Union uh, would not recognize these elections, but uh, do, do you think that this is a good thing? And uh, they got grant for our, from Armenian government. What do you? How, is is it uh, considered good thing or or controversy? There is some controversy there. Would you comment on this? Uh, Nagorno Karabakh is not part of my mandate, so. I will have to refrain from uh, any comments. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. What I can repeat is mm -hmm. uh, the EU policy is very clear concerning the support of the Minsk group and mm -hmm. uh, concerning the peaceful settlement. W I want to use this opportunity to simply uh, make it very plain. There is no change in the position of the European Union. All the speculations which uh, emerged around the visit of President Tusk are false. The European Union is not changing its position. And the cornerstone of the position is full support to the mediation efforts of the Minsk Group. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So, uh, is there any, uh, for example, if there is another outbreak of the violence in Nagorno-Karabakh, is there has you, EU has any uh, tools to um, prevent this kind of, um, uh, you know, outbreak of uh, violence or is there any way that, that the EU can influence on both sides and that they can stop, uh, you know, escalating the situation? What's, what's your take on this? Look, we as the European Union, we use every opportunity in our bilateral contacts uh, with the parties to pass the messages, uh, in particular the message that there is no military solution to the conflict. And 
we always uh, use the opportunities to express our concerns when there is an inflagration, when there is the exacerbation of tension uh, in the context of the conflict. Uh, we declare our willingness to continue our support to confidence building measures. Uh, there are different forms uh, in which these confidence building measures can be supported. At least, as you know, the European Union has ex extended the programs concerning the uh, support to uh, contacts between uh, the people of, on the two sides, uh, and this is a long-standing commitment. And we are ready to support the implementation of the settlement when it is achieved. Uh, there is, of course, the element of uh, uh, sometimes uh, increased rhetoric, which is not helpful. Uh, I know the position of the EUSR, Toivo Klar, who believes that the European Union should also uh, send signals uh, whenever such rhetoric uh, takes, uh, uh, you know, really excessive character because uh, rhetoric is important and we cannot uh, be tolerant to uh, hostile rhetorics, to the speech of hate, and that should be the policy of the European Union. And I believe here we will be doing even more in the coming years to prevent this type of uh, hostile rhetorics. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, now about the foreign policy, what, what is your reading of Armenia's foreign policy? Do you, uh, are you satisfied with the pace that Armenia is getting uh, moving towards the European Union? Uh, and and what's, uh, what's your take on that? How you evaluate? Uh, as I have said at the beginning, uh, the official assessment of our relations with Armenia is, to use the term of uh, Federica Mogherini, uh, which uh, she used uh, uh, during the last uh, partnership council is excellent. And indeed I can say that uh, uh, after the revolution uh, the uh, relations were based on strong continuity, meaning in the first place SEPA, the implementation of SEPA, and everything which uh, have been launched in the past and that I think was uh, very wise on the part of the Armenian government to stress the factor of continuity and we believe that uh, the focus in the coming months should be the implementation of SEPA. SEPA if implemented could deliver really uh, good benefits to ordinary Armenians. Uh, so we have an agenda, we have a plan and this agenda is, uh, uh, by the new government, uh, implemented in a way which uh, is uh, filling me with a lot of optimism for the future. Uh, they are very serious. They, uh, we will have uh, uh, quite intense contacts uh, in uh, autumn. There will be new visits. I cannot announce them. But uh, at the working level, I have to say that uh, we are really doing a lot of good work with our Armenian partners and we are very satisfied with the way they approach our cooperation. Generally, uh, the, the European Union, as you know, uh, we have a very transparent approach to Armenia. We do not pursue any geopolitical goals. We do not pursue any selfish interests. We are motivated by our neighborhood policy, uh, by the very uh, importance of uh, the region uh, in our neighborhood policy. And uh, we are doing it, I believe, uh, very well in terms of our cooperation, the climate of cooperation on the Armenian side. Uh, Armenia has many very serious challenges, in particular security challenges. Uh, the region around is uh, full of uh, unpredictabilities, as we can admit 
almost every day reading the world news. Uh, I believe that Armenia fo foreign policy uh, is uh, pursued uh, with a sense of responsibility and balance and, balance and open horizons, which I, I consider to be of special importance. The fact that uh, you try to uh, be open to opportunities offered from any direction, including European direction. What I find particularly inspiring in the recent months is the emphasis put on the development of on good neighborly relations with Georgia. This is something which we as the European Union consider to be uh, a very smart move on the part of the Armenian government. Yes, uh, uh, more cooperation, uh, more joint initiatives with Georgia can benefit also Armenia because uh, there are very strong, very solid areas of common interests. Of course, there are differences. There are differences also in terms of our ambitions towards the European Union, but the commonality of interests is very solid and we believe that it's good that the our new Armenian government is paying the necessary attention. Mm. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, now uh, your wishes and last words on the Armenian soils to the Armenian people. Will you come back uh, uh, to Armenia, let's say, as a, you know, to spend your vacation here with your family? Is that a possibility? Now, the floor is yours, please. Your last wishes, your words to the Armenian people. Uh. <laughs> These are words of thanks to, to Armenian people. Uh, as I, I said uh, before, I realized that uh, most of the time for me as a diplomat, I spend working with ordinary Armenians. I paid less attention to contacts with my uh, colleagues, fellow diplomats from other countries, including our member state. Less time probably even than I would wish to my contacts with the government officials uh, because uh, you know, the contacts with ordinary Armenians were for me uh, the most rewarding and the most pleasant. And I wanted to thank all Armenians uh, with whom I have shaken my hand, uh, in particular people with whom we have worked uh, on different projects uh, with civil society, but not only civil society. Uh, uh, I wanted to thank them because uh, they made my mission here so rewarding. I am leaving Armenia richer than I arrived. I uh, benefited a lot uh, from your culture. Uh, it was so pleasant to work in a country with such ancient civilization roots. Uh, I developed a uh, very strong liking uh, to your arts, music, poetry, in particular ancient poetry, architecture, and culture in general. And I believe Armenia uh, has a very unique and beautiful culture contribution, which many people in Europe are not still aware of because they consider Armenia to be a faraway place. Uh, but this uh, contact with this uh, encounter with your culture made me a richer person in terms of my cultural horizons, definitely. Secondly, Armenians are very hospitable, friendly and nice people. Uh, I have visited probably more than 100 countries in, in my life and I can say I, I will put Armenia among the top countries uh, where I met so many friendly and hospitable people, smiling, meeting a foreigner, trying to help, uh, trying to host. Even uh, recently, a, a very, you know, uh, person I have never met, when seeing me, invited me immediately to go to his home and join family. Uh, I was opening a legends trial in, in, uh, between Goris and Kapan and, and, and uh, 
an accidental person can invite you to his home, which in Western or in Europe as such, as you know, even in, in very hospitable <laughs> Czech Republic, doesn't happen often. In Armenia, it can happen every day. So this friendliness is also a very unique feature of you, which I'm taking very deep in my heart, and I'm very grateful. Uh, so it was really joyful. It was fun professionally. Also because I have seen so many important developments in your country, sometimes uh, quite uh, tragic, uh, like the April War, like the Sassnats Rare, uh, uh, events uh, in 2016, but sometimes very joyful, like the April Revolution last year. But uh, all of them uh, were important. And for a diplomat to be a witness of such important events in the life of a country is uh, you know, always a bonus. Uh, so I'm very grateful. Uh, I'm very appreciative. Uh, I don't want to extend any particular wishes for the future. I don't like when diplomats use the last moment to give the recipes for the future and so on. But I, I wanted to say, uh, living through your revolution last year, stay faithful to the ideals which brought you to the square. Do not deviate. Make the people who manage your country accountable to these ideas. Don't give up, uh, because if you continue this course, you will become a healthy nation, a modern nation, prosperous nation, and you will also build security around you, which you need, uh, which is still a, a big and, and challenging task for, for you uh, due to the environment. So stay the course, that is my message. Whether I will be coming again, only to check if you are on this course. If you deviate, <laughs> don't count on me. <laughs> Mr. Ambassador, very wise and very kind words, and thank you. I wish you, uh, you know, to sp continue to your, your diplomatic career, and I think you're, you're a very valuable diplomat for anywhere you go. I think any country will benefit from your experience, from your skills. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I enjoyed so much our interviews. I will miss them definitely. Thank you. <laughs> thank you.